Hello, my name is Amin Samud, and I will be talking about the immortal jellyfish. Normally, we see other species of jellyfish undergo sexual reproduction to make larvae, which settle at the bottom of the ocean and clump to make polyp colonies. These polyp colonies undergo asexual reproduction to make the jellyfish, and the cycle continues. The immortal jellyfish, on the other hand, is called the Turritopsis durini and undergoes a different cycle. Basically, they make gametes, larvae, then polyps, just like the other cycle. But now, if they undergo any stress, they don't die. Instead, they regress back to the polyp form, undergoing some type of undifferentiated cyst phase. So in that way, they are immortal because they can always go back to the polyp stage and continue their life cycle when they can sustain more environmentally favorable conditions to reproduce. This is called transdifferentiation. In terms of their sexual maturity, we see different patterns of regression. Before sexual maturity, they have 12 tentacles, and after they have 16. If they are pre-sexually mature, they undergo a cyst phase during their regression before reaching the polyp stage, and after sexual maturity, they just go straight to the polyp phase. This is an important part of the regression cycle and provides adaptive benefits because they can avoid death. First, this mechanism of regression was not known, and Stefano Perino of the University of Salento in Italy asked the question of how and under what conditions it happened. In the lab, they took polyps, pre-sexually mature and post-sexually mature jellyfish to account for different lifetime points and ran experiments on them. Basically, they put them in water of different temperatures and salt concentrations, physically mutilated them, and starved them as their forms of stressors. But what did all these stressors do? They all led to regression at all age stages. But who cares? This has an effect on oceanic habitat. By being immortal, they can overuse the resources and degrade the environment and just take up more space, leading to the death of more successful organisms. It's important to remember that just because they are immortal, it doesn't mean that they can't be subject to predation, oceanic disease, and other life-threatening hazards. This is similar to our immortal test tube example in class where we discussed that they can still get broken by a drunken college student at any time point. In terms of how this relates to our theories of aging and senescence, we have the disposable soma theory where our somatic tissues sustain a lot of damage to conserve energy in order for our germline to prosper, which results in the aging of our somatic cells. We also have the mutational accumulation theory, where late-acting deleterious mutations accumulate in a population over evolutionary time, leading to senescence. The immortal jellyfish, on the other hand, has negligible senescence, where we see them regress back to the polyp stage instead of aging at all. Here it's important to keep in mind that developmental regression of jellyfish results in the replacement of almost all of its cells allowing it to bypass mutational accumulation and the damage sustained to its somatic cells. It has been argued that immortality is not unnatural and there is no such thing as a natural death. There is only death and the variety of causes that lead to it.